since we met on Wednesday, uh, Monday. And what happened was our dishwasher broke. And so there's a repair guy in our area named Steve, if any of you are in the Tri-Valley, who is the best. And he came over and looked at it. And I guess our dishwasher is about 20 years old. And he said, I can try and fix it. He said, but in the new dishwashers are just CRAP compared to the old ones, but 20 years, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he gets under it and he looks and he goes, get a new dishwasher. We found the mice's house. And then I'm sitting there going, how am I supposed to get a dishwasher? Um, right now you can't get appliances. You can't do all this stuff. It's just too difficult because of COVID. And because this guy is so well regarded, he's been doing this for decades in the Tri-Valley. He could make a call and he actually bought the dishwasher for us. He got us one that was equivalent to the one we have. And it's not high end. It's not low end. It's a medium, medium, I think a Maytag. And uh, then we got somebody to come out and install last night. I was going to show you a picture, but I'm too embarrassed. It was disgusting. I mean, awful. So I'm down with rubber gloves on my hands and knees, you know, scraping it out. The flooring is ruined under it. I just, and my daughter, Adair, would always walk in the house and go, it smells in here. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. She said she would blame it on Sparrow. And I said, Sparrow doesn't spray. She doesn't do that. Well, we found it. And then what we did was um, we plugged, oh, they even ate a hole in the wall, okay? Um, we plugged it with steel wool is what we did. I'm going to get Terminix out here. And the thing is, is that we need another cat. And I don't know how to handle that emotionally with Sparrow. I don't think I can do it to her. So we back onto a field. It is what it is. Um, but we got to get our holes plugged up around the house. And and then I was going to poison the, the mice. And I said, let's throw this poison under there. And he said, don't do that. He said, it will eat a hole through because they, it, uh, it dehydrates them and it will eat a hole then through your pipes trying to get water. So they are nasty, nasty little boogers to say the least. So that was my last 20, 24 hours. Uh, the last thing I thought I'd be dealing with is a new dishwasher and I loved my dishwasher. I loved my dishwasher. It was a Kenmore, and apparently it's Whirlpool who makes those. And so, and you know, it was time. I mean, it was time. And I guess the fact that I got 20 years out of it was a good deal. Okay, spinning spools right behind us. We did put the pattern up uh, yesterday afternoon. If you go to just the home page, the front page, it's in the upper right-hand corner. Click it, download it, print it out. And it's only one, two, three pages. It's uh, two-sided, and it's just kind of like a poor man's pattern. I know a lot of you wrote in and said, I got the fabric, but where's the pattern? No, no, we, and I, again, I didn't put it out until last night, or Mary Kay actually put it up, because I didn't want you getting in there and start, start chopping up fabric, because it is a tight squeeze. Now, I did get a note from a gal saying she went and she kind of squared it up. Is it that tight of a squeeze? No, it's not that tight of a squeeze, but it's a tight squeeze, okay? So here we go right here. Yay, print it out. Um, I'm just going to go over some of the basics, and then you will have a, your homework will be prep, all right? To pre-wash or not pre-wash. That is a huge, huge question, and there are definitely two schools of thought. Most of my quilts end up on the wall, so I don't worry so much about pre-washing, unless, of course, it's a baby quilt or something like that, then absolutely 100% 100, 100 then I will pre-wash. But it, it, if you're concerned about, well, first of all, fabric is very dirty, or it's very, very dirty. And I know way back in the day, I had to do a four, qu 10 quilts in four months. I, it was something insane. 
and I didn't have time to pre-wash. And by the end, I could feel it in my lungs. I could feel kind of like wheezing a little bit. So that's one argument to why you want to pre-wash. The other argument to pre-wash is for test for color fastness. Uh, somebody asked, should they separate the darks and the lights out? Probably. Um, and then another is shrinkage. Now, I don't worry so much about shrinkage because I'm using pretty good fabric. I know I should, but I don't, all right? Uh, some people are saying on the forum, theirs didn't run. Uh, John thinks that he saw where somebody said yellow ran, that yellow, for Pete's sakes, ran. So you just never know. And yellow might run in your washing machine, but it's not going to run in my washing machine because I have different water source. So there's so many variables. As I've said in the past, if you're doing hand dyes, absolutely 100% you want to pre-wash. There's no questions asked. 100%. Cherry Wood, Ricky Tims, anybody who does hand dyes, and that's because it'll run clear in their water, but maybe not yours, all right? So Barbara gave a tip of clipping the corner of the fabric before you wash it, just clipping a little corner, okay? And that kind of helps with the strings. Um, let's say you don't want to pre-wash, but you're interested in, okay, is this gonna, I'm always afraid of um, purples and reds. Those are the ones that kind of freak me out a little bit. And I was shocked about the yellow. I've been known to just take a little piece and put it in a glass, uh, a glass, a drinking glass that's cl uh, clear, and put in water and put the piece in and put it in the microwave and see if any action happens there. I've been known to do that. But I'm also a strong proponent. If it does run, I'm not going to have a heart attack over the whole thing. And I will use um, Centhropol to wick out the colors. And that has, all, that has not, to this day, let me down. Not saying it might not in the future, but in 40 years, it has not let me down. Again not saying it might not be in the future <laughs> so here are the products that i recommend you have or a variation of um we're gonna need you're gonna need some sort of um stabilizer this is called cutaway one side of it has a light light fuse the other side you you can is not fusy what this was designed for specifically was t-shirt quilts. And it is to put this on the back side of the emblem that you're going to you know, be using for the t-shirt quilt. And what's great is that the melt point of this fusible is very low, very low. So you don't have to have your iron on high, medium at best. It's called Quilter Select Cut Away. So this is a very lovely product. We're going to use that. I'm going to have you cutting at it today or whatever product you're using. We are going to also be using, um, down the road, Print and Piece Fuse Light. All right. Because we're going to do the, when you look at this, this here, this is not pieced. This is finished applique. All right. It's not pieced. Yay. And then you're gonna want, or I should just say what, I'm, what I've used on this product project. Um, I've used the uh, Quilter Select Self-Erased Marker, and that's actually for positioning those, let's say call them the half moons, all right? And then I use the Quilter Select Glue Stick for preparing the finished applique. And then uh, I have my Fat Quarter Bundle, and, and of course you don't have to, of course you don't have to use ours. You can use your own, of course you can use your own stuff. In fact, it'll be fun to see. Um, but our Fat Quarter Bundle came with, or comes with 20 Fat Quarters, two yards of white, and an extra, I think, I think, I think, I think half yard of green, not a quarter, um, I think. Yes, an extra half yard of green fabric. And in some cases, you might have gotten two fat quarters, and it just doesn't matter, all right? So the other thing is it measures 46 by 54. 
My friend Meryl isn't one for borders, so she was considering getting two kits and just making it the blocks. So I love the border on this. I absolutely love it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the front page and you're going to print this out and you're not, well, even if you lose it, it'll still be there for you. And encourage your friends to join on. It's not a hard block at all. But there are some tricks in it, and the biggest trick for me was figuring out how to get these corners to match. And that's the thing that I thought, okay, I figured it out, and that's going to be the magic ingredient. Okay, that's going to be the key to the whole thing. The other thing I will be using is parchment paper or a pressing pad, and I'll show and I'll a pressing thing. I'll show you that later this morning why to conserve on, on the cutaway. And then, um, of course, I have all the Quilter Select rulers, of course, but I was drawn to my 8.5 by 8.5 because the block is finished 8 inches, all right? And then I also found my little uh, 3.5 by 3.5, very, very useful. So these are just like, yeah, if you're feeling like you want to spoil yourself a little bit. So what I would suggest you do after you decide if you're going to wash your fabric or not let me see, do I have everything else? Print and piece, is there anything else? Yep. Um, I would have you cut out the border fabric first out of your white, all right? And what I would do, I decided for my border to, oh, you're going to cut two seven and a half by 48 and two seven and a half by 42. Now, for good measure, I probably would add a couple inches to, to the length, all right? Just a couple so you don't cry. Although I did cry, <laughs> and I had to piece mine because I did it wrong. And the truth of it is, oh, there's a piecing right down there. You can't even see it. So if you cut it too short, that's okay. But my fear is that this is the last thing that's going to go on. And then if we start cutting into these things and... Um, we screw up the amount that we need, all right? So I would just cut that, set it aside. The other thing you might want to do is I, okay, these are finished at eight inches. I chose to have this finished at seven inches, okay? Originally, I was going to make it finished at eight inches, which is no big deal. You could do that if you want, which means you would cut it at eight and a half. Um, what I... What I, what I wanted to do was have the applique kind of tip on over into the spools themselves. And so that's why I decided to go with seven inches finished. So you cut it at seven and a half. Now that does make when it's time to do the applique a pain in the patootie because it is, you have to sew on these borders and then manage the whole darn thing you know, under your machine, but my uh, uh, 765 has a, you know, a bigger bed, and a lot of the high-end machines of all brands have a bigger bed, so it's a little bit easier to do. And when we get to the border, I'll talk about the two different ways, but if you're thinking, I don't want to wrestle this thing under my sewing machine, you might want to cut the borders at eight and a half inches wide, um, and then, of course, add extra on each length, because you just put on an extra two inches. Does that make sense, I hope? I think so. So you cut the borders from the length, not, not, not the, yes, I'm cutting it from the length just because the width is not going to be big enough. Um, yeah, you could get the 42 inch ones, but it's just because the length won't be there. If you want to do it that way, the width and piece it, I don't care. But if you don't want piecing, cut it from the length. It has nothing to do with choosing the length grain over the cross grain. It has nothing to do with that. It's just getting it large enough, okay? I am so glad we can do this together, Diane, too. Okay, the finish size, Miss Eva, is 46 by 54. But again, if you wanna make it bigger, I don't know if we still have kits in the store, we might have a couple. I don't know, and it's, a, again, it's an easy block. It's just joining it that's the pain. All right, so the first thing I'm going to have you do is, um, 
I'm going to have, okay, let me go over here. So let me go over here, over here. All right. So your little kits came with fat quarter bundles, right? What I would suggest you do is fold it selvage to selvage, even though you're missing a selvage because it's a fat quarter. Here you've got a selvage, and the selvage, if you're new to quilting, is the um, finished edge. It's, it's the finished edge. It would be on each side of the loom where the fabric's woven. And it's interesting because a length, lengthwise grain has zero, very little stretch. A little bit, that's interesting. Cross has more, um, but the bias, whoopee. Okay, so what I would strongly suggest you do is fold this um, selvage to selvage. So have the selvage be on the top, okay? And what I would do then is, need a longer ruler. I'm going to have you cut various size widths, all right? I'm gonna have you cut, maybe it says one strip at 1.5, one strip at two inches, one strip at two and a half. You will be cutting more strips down the road. In fact, you could even do two strips at one and a half, two strips at two inches, two strips at 2.5. And that is because you're gonna want various, oh, here, let me go to the pattern here. You're gonna want various widths of these particular stripes. So those are the three measurements, okay? Again, two, no, I'm sorry, one and a half, two, and two and a half. So when you are cutting a strip of fabric, if you're new to rotary cutting, let me grab my six inch ruler. Here we go. There, you, you wanna make sure that you don't get this wee wah so that you end up with a V when you open it up, all right? So there's a couple things you can do. I like to use the lines on my mat. So I'm gonna line up this fold and the fold always comes towards you, all right? And then I'm going to, I'm gonna push this one out of the way a little bit. I'm going to use not only the line going this way, but I'm going to use the line on my mat going this way. And you can see here that I'm not on, I'm off. This is not lined to here, and this is not lined to here. All right, again, I wanna move the cords because that could be a real sad moment. So I'm just gonna trim California so that she didn't get the Vs. I learned this on Simply Quilts. She would take another ruler and go like this and make sure that it is exactly on the fold. All right, but it's up to you. I'm just, you know, if you have V problems, these are the different cautions that you can do. So then, to, then I'm going to cut one and a half. Two. I love how these rulers don't slip. This is our breast cancer one that's gonna be coming out in pink. The, some of the proceeds will go to that. I don't know exactly what the program is. Okay, so here we've got, let's see how much that would take up. One, two, yeah, go ahead and do it two times and then set these aside, all right? And go through all of your fabric and cut it up. Then, oh, the other thing is, um, another way to know that you're cutting the right way is that the stripes will be going um, 90 degrees to the cut, all right? So let's do that. So you're gonna cut up a bunch of that. Oh my gosh, when, um, oh, I'm doing an absolute brain freeze. If you have a pasta, a pasta let's say you're a pasta maker, Don uh, Wilder, Lynn Wilder shared this on the show. She'll then take her, her scraps and just put them on the pasta dryer thing. You know, those things with the different rungs on it? And then they're all beautiful, ready to go. Me, I just, you know, I'm such a sloth, okay? So anyways, you're gonna cut all that up. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to cut the stabilizer. 
Now, when you unroll this cutaway, the, the fusey is on the inside and you can see it. I mean, you can kind of see it sparkle. I don't know if you can there, but you know it's the fusey. Um, and the dull is on the outside, all right? So let me show you what to do there. I am going to take my eight and a half inch ruler. I am not going, oh, that's my skylight, by the way. We're trying to cover up the uh, windows and I realized, oh, that's my skylight. Um, I am not going to cut a perfect eight and a half using this ruler. I'm going to cut it about like nine and I'm going to rough cut it. It's just not that big of a deal. I'm just going to cut around. Let me turn on my iron because I show you something good. Like this. Maybe, maybe quarter, half, just a little bit more. All right. And you're going to want how many of these? One, two, three, four times five is 20 of these. But here's the thing. You've got all of this right here that's waste, but it's not because let's measure what that is. That is six. Six and six is 12. Yay. So what I would do is for, for one of these and another one of these, you can get another one with this up here by simply going like this. Okay. Remember, this is the fusy side. I'm going to come over about this much. And then I get my little ironing mat. Remember, Fusey is still up. Fusey is still up. Again, it is a stabilizer for t-shirts. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to overlap. And then I'm going to use my parchment paper. Look at this. It's brown. I've never seen that before. Or, your, again, your pressing cloth. And I'm just going to go like that. Now it's stuck together, and I can get another square out of it. Oops, that was not too good there. I'd have to press that again. It's moving a little bit. <clears throat> and then yet, here's another square. So again, we're going to need 20 of these, all right? 20 of these, and you're going to set it aside. And then what, I, what we're going to do... Uh, my, oh, I am so, so very sorry, Gloria. Where's the pattern? Go to the front page of thequiltshow.com and it's right there. You click through and print it out and it's free to the world. Hey guys, help me pass the word on this because it is so dang cute. Um, oh, the other thing, so just set that aside and then we'll start sewing on, on Monday. Um, ready to go. You're also going to want an add a quarter ruler. I forgot about that. We're going to use that on Monday. We're going to use an add a quarter. We're going to start sewing. And I didn't want to start sewing today because I felt like there were too many basics to go over. So let me see if I have any questions here. Alex, could we use the applique mats instead of parchment? Yes, absolutely. I couldn't think of what the name was. And I have to tell you, I'm kind of starting to clean out this room and I found my pressing sheets. I couldn't have found them. And then, uh, you know, for anything before. And then, of course, I went to find it today. And now that I'm putting everything away, I can't find it. But the parchment paper works just fine. And so do the pressing cloths. And don't, I'm going to say in the kit too, I didn't know how I felt about the grays being in this. I love it. So don't be afraid to throw the, the grays in there that are with it. I just absolutely love it. And let me think, any other questions? Monterey, Teflon, yeah, Teflon sheets, Teflon sheets, that's it. Thanks, Roxanne. Uh, the name of the fabric is called Kaleidoscope, and it's Andover. And here are, I, I don't know if we have any kits left or not. I think we might. Um, they're putting them up as much as they can for as they cut them, because you get all these bolts of fabric, and sometimes they're short. And so we don't know exactly how many kits we're going to have, but this stuff is just out of this world, out of this world. But I could also see this like in Cave's stripes, you know, his stuff would be wonderful. John? 
We do have about 50 kids. Right, yeah, kind of... Are they put up on the site? Yeah. Okay, we've got about 50 kits. And remember, these instructions are not going anywhere, guys. They're not going anywhere. So it's not like, you know, you have to have them to get going. Let's see, Doreen. Yes, there we go. Uh, the fabrics, the fabrics um, are killer. They're so beautiful. Jane, yeah, we're going to, let me go back to what Jane was saying so that I get this right. Um, Jane, are we cutting two sets for each fabric? Yeah, just start with just start with two sets. You may go back and have to cut more. On the instructions, it just says one strip of each size out of each fabric, but that's ridiculous. Get a couple strips. I chose light purple batik for my background, okay? Oh, we'll wait and see. Lando, we will see. Tracy Garden, yeah, cave would be great. You know what else would be? How much of the strips should be cut? How much stay for the applique? That's why I don't take more than two strip, two sets of strips off each one. And that's why there's also a, a um, extra green in there for the stem. Can I iron the cutaway to the fat quarter and then cut? Don't, do, don't, do, don't, no, that's not what it's for. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just do what I told you to do and stop at that. Um, when, then you will have enough for applique. You'll have enough, yeah. Don't iron anything onto the fabric, please. Um, why is a stable so necessary? I'll show you why. Because what we're going to be doing is basically wonky paper piecing. And so you're going to just be like sewing on that foundation and doing flip and sew. So, yes, you need something. I mean, you could use um, muslin if you have muslin, you have that. Um, if you have another brand of stabilizer, stabilizer, you can use it. Not a fusible, a stabilizer. Okay. When pressing fusibles, when pressing fusibles are fused sides up. No, the fuse side goes to the fabric. But don't fuse anything other than the two pieces of stabilizer together. Can I be clear on that? Don't do anything, anything other than this, all right? It was funny, Mary Kay said, tell, why don't you tell them certain things? And I go, I do, but they're, they're, they're adults and they don't listen. <laughs> don't listen. Cut things, get it ready, stop. <laughs> Can I be clearer than that, <laughs> right? Okay, um, would sewing a curve half moon of white work instead of applique yeah it probably would but it's not that hard to applique I to me that would be stepping into a mud puddle because this other way is so easy and you could even hand applique if you wanted ID number from the book there is no book there is no book I'm okay and Carmen said uh, sorry I meant patching the fusibles um, Carmen, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Let me go back a little bit. Look for you. When pressing fusibles, are few size up? Okay, there we are. There we are. Sorry, I meant patching the fusibles. Oh, yes, yes. Both both few sides are up. Yes, and then that's when you put the pressing sheet on it, and then press, and then and then they'll be stuck together. Yeah. Um, yes, when joining pieces of cutaway, fusible size up. Thank you, Kathy. See, here's the other thing. Sometimes you guys write us questions that are not technical to pulling a ticket and things like that. Just go to the forum. You're going to get somebody there way faster than one of us. I can promise you that. Okay, so what is going on? Let me tell you what's going on. Right when I'm done here, I'm getting in my car and I'm heading somewhere to meet my friends for lunch because we all have shots. And then tomorrow, Friday and Saturday, I'm in Joanne Sharp's online retreat. I gotta show you the goodie bag, she said. I mean, this was our swag bag. There's so much good stuff in here. It is unbelievable. And even some original art. Yeah, even some original art. So there's, a, I'm really looking forward to that. But then that leads us to what's happening Friday. 
Well, Friday, it's going to be Ask John. And if you have questions for John, please send them to me at this email address. A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at gmail.com. And I'm going to tell you, uh, basically, I'm going to I'm going to hit the door within 10 minutes after this being done, and then I'm going to be fairly immersed tomorrow. So sooner the late, sooner than later, to get the questions to me. So far, Sue Rap has the best question, <laughs> best. And Sue, the part that was so wonderful was he goes, he didn't get it, and he didn't get it. He goes, well, what would that be? <laughs> I just nailed it. <laughs> he started laughing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, when we cut the white arcs, do, do not cut the white arcs. Don't do anything. If you cut the white arcs, I'm going to come to your house and spank you. Okay? Just do what I told you to do. Joanne, and I'm going to put myself in this category too. Joanna Sharp and I laugh. We are, we, adults are the worst students. <laughs> you know what I'm included? I am included, so I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. Just do what I say, all right? I have to tell you, and then I'm going to go. Uh, Lennox is here two mornings a week for her distance learning, and she's going into first grade. She's a baby, and they do math, they do this, they do that, and she can do it for about two hours, and that's even with a break. And during break time, we do art or we eat or whatever. And she goes, Bubby, I need for counting. Do you have any paper clips? And I said, sure. And so I get out some paper clips. And then you, she could care less what she should be doing. She's putting them together, you know, making them long and this and that. And, okay, she might count them up. She might not. And at, when it, <laughs> the lesson was over. She hooked it together. She goes, look, I made a necklace. And I go, oh, my gosh, that's me. That is so me. I told a dare, and that fruit did not fall, fall off the tree very far. And then when it comes to math, William, her younger brother, is teaching it to her as he gets it. He's almost a savant with numbers. So... Yeah, anyway, look, Bobby, a necklace. <laughs> and then John's in a meeting, and he, she runs in her his room to grab his paper clips. He goes, get away from those. those for me. <laughs> so, okay, you guys. When pressing the fusible, the fuse sides up. Yeah, okay, we got it. Oh, I see a couple more comments. Um, um, would sewing the curved half moon of white work instead of applique? I don't know. Somebody can try it out and let me know. Uh, is a pattern on? Is a pattern on taste or your side? No, it's on TQS. If using, oh wow, uh, Sue. If using silk neckties, should I have it stabilized first, then the other? Yes. Ooh. What if I was doing silks? Yeah, I probably would. Oh my gosh, it's going to be beautiful. Um, hey, Shelly. Okay, enjoy your lunch and retreat. I want to sew. I feel your pain. Okay. All right. I, I think that's it. And I'm off. I'm going to return Wendy's hankies to her. Um, I'm getting, we're doing a big meetup, all right? And there's a Johnny West store there too. Uh, I will behave myself. I only buy this stuff when it's on sale. I promise. I promise, John. <laughs> so ask John on Friday and I will see you guys. I'm so grateful that we're finally starting this. Just do what I requested for you to do and nothing else. I'm begging on bended knees. Bye-bye. <laughs>